is community and citizenship director. Is that the right or manager for Turner? Technically, I'm a coordinator. Okay. Um, so, but I am managing the department here in South Florida, which would encompass um, Miami-Dade County, Broward County, and Palm Beach County, and Monroe, if we ever were to uh, pursue and be awarded work down there. So that's my, those are my little fiefdoms. So my company is working on the Jackson Health System Capital Plan. And we know, I know that Jackson is doing several projects in partnership with Turner, the rehab, um, Jackson South. Tell us some of the other projects in the community that people would recognize that Turner has um, managed. Well, we've managed projects, you know, at Miami International Airport in the past. Uh, we did Telemundo, uh, their offices. Uh, we've done things with World Caribbean, and that's just here in South Florida. Um, we have a lot of interior jobs, which we call SPD from our special projects division. So those are projects that are, you know, interior fit outs. Um, we're doing a project for Ford. Um, we have a project for Goldman Sachs coming up. That's, uh, that's basically in its pre-construction stage. So we have a wide variety of projects here. Roughly, we have around 40 projects that are at different stages. Like same thing with Jackson. We have projects that are wrapping up in a different phase or, or just about to start. Um, so, and we have a project at Baptist, some work at FIU. Um, so we, we've been in the South Florida area getting some stuff done. We've actually, we've actually been here over a hundred years uh, wow. in South Florida. So uh, quite a few things that, uh, that are up and running. So, so what I'm hearing is you're in a lot of industries. You're in healthcare, education, aviation, um, cruise line, I guess ports, et cetera. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So there's so many different industries. So for a small business, even approaching Turner Construction Company can be very intimidating. How do you make an introduction? What's your recommendation for making an introduction to Turner? <laughs> and, and, and yeah, uh, it can be intimidating because one, you can be contacting someone that is not the person that you need to move forward. So if you're a small business and you're at Jackson, for instance, you should have an opportunity to engage our project manager whoever's overseeing your work directly, they're, they're your best first resource to kind of one, know what's coming up um, and be introduced to any work uh, in continuing phases. Uh, contacting me would probably be at this point the best way of doing it. Um, and I'll share my contact um, to whatever platform you want. And because at least I would have an understanding of who you should be talking to, which is a, which is a challenge with any big corporation. If you cold call Turner and you're like, hi, um, you know, I do drywall and uh, how do I go after work? And that's, that's where I can help you navigate whether getting you pre-qualified or who's the right person in procurement to talk to. Um, Cause it can be challenging. And that's, that's a part of my role is to kind of like help you navigate us. So that's good. So you mean finding your office and parking in your parking space is not the best approach. Okay. I mean, so that's good to know. So you're, <laughs> so I mean, you could, you, you, you can do that. Um, you can do that. You can, you can ring the bell and, and kind of walk there. Right. Uh, but you also, you know, people are working remote. So you have to hope that they're even physically in the office or, or able to answer your question. So if you're, if you're looking for work with Turner and then you just stroll in there and you meet someone from like, uh, you know, that's doing 3D modeling in our BIM department, that might not be the right person for you so no no I think calling ahead and kind of finding out or contacting me to find out who the right contact also depending on the business where are you are you did you just start or have you been in the industry for 15 years and haven't been able to kind of like get on one of our projects so it also depends on where you are with with your work that's a great point so if you're a new business newly certified that means you're in that one year post one year window and then you have to get pre-qualified for are you really ready to get pre-qualified with Turner? I mean, they're gonna be, I mean, they're gonna be they're going to be some things that that you don't really have in place, like your your EMR, which is like your experience modification rating, something that impacts your insurance. Um, most times, your rating is you know one because you don't have any you know you don't have a resume. 
Mm -hmm. um, and I think at that point, if you're a business that's under three years, I think looking at who we contract is also a good avenue. Um, so I can have that conversation also where it's just like, hey, you might not be able to handle a direct contract with us, but here are other contractors that we actually provide contracts to where you can come in as a second tier. And I think that might be a more beneficial uh, you know, resource for you. So once a firm is pre-qualified with Turner, I'm assuming they're getting notifications about opportunities or meetings to learn more about what's coming out in terms of bidding opportunities. How does that work? So you are, once you pre-qualify with us, meaning all your information, your financials are, are in, your certification statuses are in, and then, um, you know, once that happens, then you are put on list depending on the packages that have become available. Um, you'll be notified to bid. Uh, but I think building relationships is really important. So that way you can contact, you know, someone like Greg Walker, who has our procurement team here in South Florida and say, hey, um, what's coming up? When is it coming up? Or even what are you guys even looking at? Um, questions like what projects have small business goals? Right. So you kind of have to, I know it's difficult, uh, but you kind of have to have like an awareness of what, what work is coming up and also an awareness of who's a good contact to kind of notify you um, beyond like getting notifications through, you know, just to participate to bid. So you have to have multiple approaches. So let's say you're a small company and you've submitted a bid, but you, you were not selected this time. Does Turner, I know you guys are swamp, but is there an avenue if someone wanted to say, mm -hmm. hey, can you explain to me why my numbers didn't meet what you were looking for and give me some insight and in how I should do better for the next bid? Is that something that the Turner culture is open to? Yes, definitely. So we, what we'll do is I will conduct an open door session. Okay. So what I will do is that I can actually schedule um, a meeting with someone in procurement because we want people to be qualified. We want people to be qualified and we want people to grow because we're not self-performing a large majority of the work. So the larger you get, the more we can hit these goals and initiatives and actually take on more projects. So it's in our interest to let you know hey, this is where you were, or your number was really low. Did you possibly miss X, Y, and Z when you were reviewing the drawings or what difficulties did you have? So we will set up an open door session to kind of walk you through it and understand where you can develop. But the same thing happens with us. We go after projects where it's like, oh, we, we, weren't, awarded, we weren't awarded that job. And we also want to know like, hey, what could, did we present well? Did we put together the team? um uh where where were our shortfalls so i think i think it's good to have that because we go through the same process uh internally understood what are turner's small business goals have you set a goal for the state for the national how does that work how do you make sure you're in, engaging small businesses what, what are your overall small business goals so our goals are going to come in in two ways right so they're either going to be internally driven or they're gonna be driven by the client. So in Jackson, those, driven, those goals are driven by Miami-Dade County, right? So right. they'll let us know what they, you know, what they deem as successful, um, what percentage it is that they want us to hit, and then they'll evaluate that they actually came to fruition. When no goal is being set forth by the county or government agency or, or any type of entity like that, then I can rely on our internal goal, which is I'm going for a 20% diverse spend goal. Um, that is our national goal. So at that point, if it's a goal that's being driven in internally, then I can just say, hey, uh, SBE, CBE, DBE, LGBTQ plus certified, like if it's an internal goal, then I can accept those certifications as long as I, as long as those are coming from uh, reputable uh, third parties that vet, that vet the, in the business. So it depends on the goal. Um, federal work, you typically have DBE goals right. and we have to meet those. Um, so if there's, if there's not one there, um, then we can, uh, we can, we can, let, uh, you know, go forward with our 20%, uh, MWBE goal, which is our national standard. So you say your goal, your spin goal is 20%. It's the process for getting into Turner's system 
the same for goods and services as it is for construction, because sometimes it may be a little difficult to navigate when you're in the goods and services arena. And you're right. Um, the pre-qualification is a currently it's being revamped because of those specific needs. Um, what I found with supplier diversity, with suppliers and uh, uh, vendors and suppliers is that some of the questions aren't relevant right. um, when they go through our application process to our tr traditional pre-qualification. Um, so they need to actually be a little bit more diligent. Also, we're not awarding as many supplier contracts um, because a lot of times some of those vendor supplier contracts are being held by the contractor that we're awarding to. So it's kind of like within their responsibility. So it's like, if you need steel, we're trusting that you're getting steel um, on your own. And that's not necessarily a separate package. So we have that conversation with Jackson. It's like, hey, you have a supplier goal. Um, that is easy because most of our contracts, most of our bigger contracts are coming on the work in place um, construction side. So now that we are in a new environment, I remember early on, Turner was very aggressive in terms of outreach, um, pre-bid conferences, availability. What is your approach now? Because it's very difficult to build relationships, make introductions in this environment. How are you, I guess, making that option available for interested parties? And in the, well, this is where someone like you also, you know, I have to thank you for the opportunity because this gets umbrellaed into that. We're trying to make an outreach. And for me, it's been more challenging because I'm originally from New York. You know, I worked in the pre-COVID days of meet the prime events and trade shows. And, right. and then when I, when I moved over to South Florida, a part of my job is relationship building. Like, and then, you know, you're three counties, very different communities within right. the communities, um, especially here in South Florida, we have a wealth of diversity down here with different needs. So I have done in the last six months, I have done in-person events. I've done events at churches, mm -hmm. um, which were socially distant and hybrid events that were recorded and um, just open panel discussions. Uh, Turner School, which is our training program, yes. was a good way for me to meet groups of contractors virtually. And the good thing about that was that there are multiple sessions. So it wasn't like a one thing where you attended for three hours and then you just logged off. The, rep the repetition allowed me to understand their needs and um, who they were. And then uh, we have done outreach events for projects where it's like, hey, we're gonna have this virtual event to kind of explain this project that's coming up. And you know, we did that with, with Palm Beach International Airport. We had two packages out there and we solicited SBEs and we had a full informational session. So right now it's just like, I'll probably finish out the year virtually, but we're looking to engage as much as possible. Especially for me, I need to engage as much, much as possible so I know where the need is. So before we move on, tell us your contact information. We'll certainly put it on the edited version of this video, but tell us your contact information. So my contact information, the best way to reach you is by email because it will trigger my computer, phone, and watch. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, A-G-E-N-A-O at T-C-C-O dot com. And uh, I spend the first hour of every day going through my emails just to make sure that I'm not, you know, negligent. Because people will call you out. That's one thing you know. When you, be, when you meet contractors, especially small, hungry contractors in person, they would be like, hey, uh, six days ago, I sent you something. What happened? <laughs> right. For small businesses, when someone is responsive, it really helps us. It really does. Absolutely. I'm glad you mentioned the Turner School of Construction because I sat in a couple of classes, pre-COVID, of course, <laughs> and saw the value in that. So I just wanted to go a little bit into that. I know you touched on it, but it is free. Yes. And it covers a gamut of issue or training and it's held in, in different markets, correct? It's moved throughout the tri-county or is it moved throughout the state of Florida? So I, had, I, I do have a counterpart, uh, Mimi Flatley, who is um, over in our Orlando office. So when there's Turner School, when Turner School returns to an in-person format, she will be select, you know, selecting her space and an audience there. In South Florida, I will rotate it. Um, 
being flexible as I typically am, I do appreciate the fact that, you know, hybrid model is the way I want to go moving forward. So yes, I was once a Turner School student myself when I was first hired by Turner because uh, I needed to understand what we did better. And I sat through all the sessions and it, they were incredibly uh, understanding how we estimate project management, types of contracts and how they can catch you if, you don't, if you're off guard, uh, insurance and bonding. It, it was able to, it, it educated me and then, um, and the classes are built around you know, what the contractors let us know we want. Uh, the one good thing about virtual is that they'll tell you, hey, we want to do a business development course. And with virtual, it's a lot easier to coordinate. So moving forward, um, I am looking to have a Turner School in Spanish. Oh. Uh, I, Miami is what, 68% Hispanic. So right. if we're catering to our community to some extent, then that's something that needs to be put in place. And, but when it does happen, I do want to do a uh, hybrid where if you are in Broward, but still want to participate, I will try to save you that drive um, and vice versa. So I think that's the way it should go as we rotate. That way people can access it. Also, if it's people's schedule, um, small businesses are usually six people with 30 roles. Um, and I think the fact that they can log in, get what they need in 90 minutes, uh, and still manage their business to keep the lights on and, and put kids through college and stuff like that, I think it's important. So I, I think after COVID, I think it's something that we need to continue. So do you know, the time? will it be offered in the first quarter of next year or that determination hasn't been made? I'm looking towards the end of the first quarter um, because I would love to do a Spanish one. So I'm looking at uh, the easiest way to put it is like, I'm looking at qualified individuals that can talk shop in Spanish. Uh, okay. I think that's, that's uh, there's a difference between being able to, it's a, uh, you know, to have casual conversations, but I need people that are one experience and two can talk about the technical aspects of contracting and safety uh, and scheduling and, and, and feel comfortable delivering that message accurately. I don't want the quality to drop in any way, shape or form because we're, we're changing the language for it. So I want to have two next year. I want to have one uh, late uh, first quarter. And I want to have one in the third quarter. That way we kind of space off our professors and we also space off because contractors need to go after stuff. Well, thank you for that. As we move to a close, I do want to say, I don't think you have talked it up enough because <laughs> I guess, because I've said in the classes, and I must say the level of expertise, the information is, is very impressive. And I want to reiterate, it's offered for free, which yes. is mind blowing because it's such an investment, not only into yourself as a professional, but as well as in your business, because you're building all the relationships with all of the other people who are attending. And then of course the, the presenters. So I love that. Kudos to Turner for that. So before we wrap up, we've talked about pre-qualification process, how to get in touch with you. Explain to me how the layout for Turner. Am I to understand it? You're divided up. Like if someone is interested in not only working with Turner locally, but let's say in North Florida, is that the same? Are you the same contact? You said you, you cover the South Florida market. You have a contact in Orlando. Because I initially, I thought when I first started working on the Jackson project and really kind of understood Turner's um, dynamic in terms of the players, I thought one person covered all of Florida. Has that changed? Yes. So when you engaged us a few years back uh, with my predecessor, uh, Rhonda Wimbley, who did an admirable job of covering the state, um, you know, she did cover yeah. the state. And for, a, for a small business person, one person works, right? Because that's only one call. So now I have to develop more relationships with all of the other parties. So this is good to really understand, like you said earlier, knowing who to contact based on where the interest is. I'm sorry. Go ahead. But it also allows us to cater to you better. Um, right. If you understand, right. you know, Florida is a very large state, both yes. in diversity and in logistically. You know, yes. the, drive, the drive from South Florida to Tallahassee is you know, a drive. You know, I can, I can fly across the country in the same amount of time that it takes you to drive there. Um, and I think that even, you know, with Mimi and I, it's just understanding our community. So even if I was just Miami Dade focused, which I'm not, but just to understand that, you know, you have around 34 cities, each one of them has different needs. Each one of them have different contractors and vendors. 
So to have one individual kind of have that kind of grasp and understanding is a lot. Right. Um, she did it for decades and it's amazing. But yes. I think that by dividing the state, you're only one memorizing one other person, uh, thankfully. But at the same time, it allows us to really understand that Broward and Broward CBE program is different than Palm Beach and their programs and initiatives. And I think it's a lot to ask of one individual to kind of like capture it. Because, you know, they're, they're over 40 of me nationally. Mm. Uh, um, and then they vary in size. So in Texas, there's a few of them. Uh, in New York City, there's a community of citizenship as a team. Wow. Seeing different initiatives. And I think the one thing that most people don't know is that not only do I do, you know, supply diversity, um, but like yesterday I was at Coral Park Senior High School speaking to, you know, high school students about the importance of uh, workforce inclusion and, you know, unconscious bias in the construction industry, right? So I was doing that. And then later on this evening, I'll be at a United Way event wow. to continue networking. So it's just like dividing it. Uh, it's, it's just more effective if you want to actually reach your audience. And it demonstrates Turner's further commitment to be more available to the small business community or to the community as a whole. So just making sure I understand. So for Florida, there are two people. And, and, we're, not, and we're not doing it on our own, thankfully. Right. So, right. so we're, we're two individuals that will use all, like I'll use all 200 and whatever staff members that are in South Florida, depending on your need. So you might start off with me or you might start off with a project super. Um, and then you'll, you know, start relationships in pre-construction and uh, procurement. And, you know, if you're on, on enough Jackson jobs, you'll eventually possibly meet the executive there. So I'm just a good way to kind of like navigate you or steer you if you get lost. Um, but you can have relationships in different touch points uh, depending on the projects that you're on. And one closing question, certification, pre-qualification. How long does that process take? Because I know a lot of people wait until they see something of interest and they say, oh, let me get pre-qualified returner. And that might be too late. What is that window or how long does that process take? And why should people do it in advance before they even see something of interest, a bid opportunity? Now, and that's a great point, um, in advance, because I don't want it to be something that pauses your participation on a bid. Now, are there times where someone that's not quote unquote pre-qualified uh, participates in a bid? Yeah, there are times, depending on their reputation, they might have just never done work with us, but they've done work with everyone else or, or other firms. So they have an established history and reputation, but I don't want them to close a door that doesn't need to be shut on them. And, and, and the more that you streamline the process or help us streamline the process, then the easier it is. So if I, if I know that you're a small firm or your county you know, certified firm uh, is wants to bid on this project coming up, the first thing the procurement officer is gonna say if they're not already, already familiar with you is, oh, are they, certi are, you know, are they pre-qualified? Can I take a look at what they've done or how long they've been in business? before I add them to this list. And then I don't wanna say, well, um, no. And can you give me, you know, two months cause they have to get certified financials and a letter from their insurance firm and navigate the paperwork that's required. Okay. And um, I don't want companies to kind of create barriers that don't need to be there. And it's, I know it's redundant. Um, I know it's tedious. No one likes applications. <laughs> um, they're not fun. <laughs> to be honest, but, uh, and then we'll, we'll push it along. So once you get in the system and you send me an email, like, Hey, I created a profile. Um, here's my number. So I know how to look you up and that you're in there. And then we'll kind of be like, Hey, let me get someone to review it. So we can expedite it. You can get it done within a couple of weeks because it does take time for you to gather the documents required. Understood. And if someone doesn't pre-qualify, are they allowed to appeal? What happens in that case? What do you mean appeal? Like, <laughs> you know, I'm always <laughs> thinking of, hey, give us another chance. <laughs> but what happens if someone, you say, well, you don't, you don't qualify in terms of your bonding or whatever, whatever, whatever. 
Well, bond, bonding, if, if you're pre-qualifying, then we kind of can do two things. One, we, have, we can kind of understand what you do, how long you've been doing it for, and what you're kind of capable of. Right. Um, it's like a resume. You know, it, it lets us see your history. And we're giving you a chance to present your own story, right? Um, if, and then if you have issues like or concerns or challenges like bonding or insurance, then we can also find a way to assist you with those things. So if I see that bonding is an issue, this immediate project might not be something that you can participate on, but I can turn around and say, hey, why don't you talk to Startup FIU and let them assist you in securing bonding? Or why don't you talk to the MBDA and actually have them work with you to put together a business plan? So if I can see what you're what you're done, if I can see your resume, if I can see your capabilities statement, I can assist you. But if you're, if you're just walking in cold, then it's tough for procurement to have confidence so they can put you on a project that you're gonna be held accountable for performance. And then for me, it's like, I don't know how to help you yet because mm -hmm. you're telling me you want food. We're in a supermarket and I can't direct you to an aisle. So I think it, it helps, it helps to, to have that information there. You're laughing, but it's true. <laughs> yes. Let me tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm thriving off of your energy. Let me, when, we first, when we first connected, I said to you, it's so refreshing. I don't know if you remember how accessible and how responsive you have been from one email. I don't know if you remember. It's been about two months. But <laughs> you are that person. So thank you very much. Of course. Her has really selected a wonderful community and citizenship coordinator. And thank you for making yourself available. Tell us your name, first, last name, your email. I don't know if you want to tell us the phone number, because then they might, you know, put you on speed dial. But at least the email. As long as you don't call me to tell me that my warranty is expired, I think I'm okay. I get a, I get enough of those. Um, so uh, so once again, my name is Amor Janeo, uh, Community and Citizenship here in South Florida. Um, my email, which is still the best way to reach me. It's A-G-E-N-A-O at T-C-C-O dot com. Wonderful. I look forward to meeting you in person. It will be fun so we can have these conversations. And if people have advice, let me know too. Um, I'm, I'm very good at accepting contractors or, or other people to say, hey, why is this uh, so difficult? Or, or why aren't you more responsive with this, that, the other thing? So I'm really open to people letting me know how I can kind of make adjustments to, to make their lives easier with us. <laughs> Wonderful. And I'm so glad Turner brought you from New York to, to, to warm South Florida to help small businesses. Even though I do miss the snow sometimes. <laughs> oh, wow. Don't tell us that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been we're fun. Uh, you think we're spoiled? I was, technically I was born here. I just wasn't raised here. So it's, it's, a, it's a little coming up home. <laughs> Wow, wow, wow. Well, enjoy, enjoy. I do look forward to meeting you in person and have a great rest of the year if we don't connect again. Thank you okay, so much. No, we will. Take care. Okay, bye-bye.